Day two of our Build With Me series, John Siskovitz Chicken Tractors, and today we are going to be, it's like 30 degrees out and snowy in May today, it's ridiculous, but nice to be working in the barn today, in the, in the workshop today. We're gonna be doing half lap joints. I decided to build a John Siskovitz Chicken Tractor. For years, I have been wanting one of these chicken tractors, but not building them. I actually built a whole homesteady chicken tractor years ago, even though I knew about John's chicken tractors. No, we're not. Ready? Oh, why did you Let's get it? Let's see, ready? One, two, three. And I kind of blame the half lap joint. You see, I'm not a very good carpenter. I don't have a lot of carpentry skills, and just the fact that this part of the project existed held me back. Creating a joint in the wood, basically I'll show you John's picture of what a half lap joint is. That, doing that, and John teaches you in the book how to do it. Just knowing I would have to do this kept me from building this chicken tractor because I didn't know how to do that, I don't know how to do that, and it's like, oh, I don't know, it seems like something you need a lot of carpentry skills for. And I built a chicken tractor for the Homesteady chicken tractor that had zero carpentry skills needed. It was completely made, almost completely made of metal. <laughs> there was a door in the front, so you needed a little carpentry, but mostly it was metal, uh, radiator clamps, and zip ties. And that chicken tractor worked, but Access in that tractor was not great because it was an A-frame chicken tractor. It was kind of small, and when you had to get in and out of it, uh, reaching back in there to get eggs or chickens out of there, it was hard. You had to send the kids in. And because it was mostly metal, there was lots of sharp little metal edges and things. Overall, the Homesteady chicken tractor worked for chickens, but it wasn't as good as it could have been. It, it was heavier than what I wanted. It had some flaws. So now here we are, years later, needing some chicken tractors. I decided, you know what? I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna learn these carpentry skills that are required to make the John chicken tractor. Now he does say you don't need to do the half lap joint. So all along I could have just said, ah, whatever, I don't need to do it. But I'm gonna do it because part of you know becoming a better farmer, a better homesteader, growing as a person is pushing yourself to learn new skills. This is one I have been holding back on a long time, but today you me, we're gonna learn to do half lap joints. And if you're watching and you're like, Austin, I already know how to do it, congratulations. But I don't, so whoever of you doesn't, let's learn together today. Let's try to figure out how to do a half lap joint, see if it comes out half as good as it's supposed to. John has a little bit of encouragement in the book. He says, I chose to use the half lap joints because they add a lot of structural integrity and flexibility, which I feel is worth the extra effort. This allows the chicken tractor to conform to the ground a little better while still holding up to the rigors of farm use. If you'd like, you can skip the joints and simply screw the pieces of wood together. Just keep in mind doing so will affect some of your measurements. I have a strong leaning toward putting in the effort and making the half lap joints, but of course you're welcome to do what you're most comfortable with. So there's John's thumbs up on skipping this if you want to. He says, this is an intermediate woodworking technique, but I have faith in you. You're going to learn something cool here if you didn't already know how to do it. Having honed my technique on my chicken tractors, I now use it elsewhere on other carpentry projects around the farm. There it is, John encouraged me. You can do it, I can do it. Let's do some half lap joints. This is not an instructional video. <laughs> All right, I gotta cut like a ton of three and a half inch half lap joints. So I'm gonna cut a template here on this little block of wood and that way I'll be able to mark all these really, really quick with my template. So take the hat off so I don't strangle myself. Put my safety gear on. Chew. This was silly of me. John says in the book, when you're making a half lap joint, the whole point of it, duh. All right, so here I am making a three and a half template, but a two by four 
if we're making a half lath joint, the whole point is that our two by four is, yep, three and a half wide because the whole point of the half, half lap joint is to take this piece and this piece and run them together like that. So this is my template. Any two by four, if I just put it down and draw the line should help me. So let's try that. Let's actually cut one of these joints and see if that'll do it. And if that'll do it, then we'll just keep using the two by four as a template. Looks good. Yep. Marks up right. First attempt at a half lap joint. I've set my saw to three quarters of an inch depth on the side. And now, John shares the same tip that I shared with you in our last video in the book about using your speed square as a guide here for your first cut. This is one of those instances we talked about how, uh, in our last video, we talked about how the chop saw was better for what we were doing. But in this instance, we gotta use the circular saw because chop saw can't do this. Not that I know of. So I forgot to put my earring protection on. First attempt, now we chisel it smooth. Whew, there's gotta be a better way. <laughs> Gonna see if that's gonna do it. Uh, I did my first half lap joint. It's pretty messy, pretty not great. But I can see next time take more off with the saw. And uh, yeah, I'm learning new skills. It's a lot, that's a lot. It's gonna be a lot of time doing half lap joints. Hoo wee! That's okay, I can do this, I'm a big boy. Okay, here's the other reason why the John Siskovich chicken tractor, I chose to do this instead of making a home study chicken tractor. So, the home study chicken tractor access was not as good as the Siskovich chicken tractors. Cost wise, home study chicken tractor is a bit more expensive. Weight wise, it's probably a bit heavier because it's a lot of metal. Animals, the home study chicken tractor could only do chickens. There was not a lot of headspace. This is, I think, why the John Siskovich chicken tractor is better than most designs out there. You can, in a Salatin tractor, you can put a bunch of chickens, a, maybe could put some, maybe could put some rabbits. Uh, I think it's a Peterson chicken tractor out there. You can put chickens, maybe rabbits. This little structure, because of its Gothic style roof, you can put chickens, rabbits, turkeys. You could let your lambs use it for a little place to go and get out of the elements. Uh, you could put so many different kinds of animals. <laughs> Our little mini pigs might be able to use it as a, a place. They might tear it up. I'm not sure if I'd let pigs go in there, but the mini ones, the small ones, could certainly use it as some shade. The point is, it's a lot more, you can get a lot more use out of a Siskovich tractor because of the height. You can use it for egg layers. You can put a roost in there and actually put egg laying chickens in there. So you get more uses from it. And because we're a homestead with a lot of different animals, all the time there's a need. Quick, we gotta put this animal in a little structure. If I have a couple of chicken tractors sitting there, there's bound to be one that's available, I can put some, some whatever in it. So it's very versatile. So while it's gonna be challenging learning these new skills, uh, it's gonna take me a long time to do these half lap joints. This video is basically just gonna be me doing half lap joints to music.
okay? Uh, yeah, worth it because I'm gonna have a structure that I can use for a lot of different things. done with every single half lap joint and I have to say it's kind of like what John said in the book they are a, a next level carpentry skill from basic beginner they were a little complicated and we did use a little bit of a cheater method on some of these pieces the pieces where the half lap joint was at the end my buddy Andy came over with his table saw and we ran the pieces in on the table saw like this and then we just cut with the skill saw like that. So those half lap joints we did a bit of a cheat at. But the ones with the center half lap you can't really do that with. So we had to do it the way John showed in the book. And in the beginning it's a little overwhelming. You're thinking like, oh man, I gotta make a lot of these and this is hard. But once you get the rhythm of it, like John shows you how to do in the book, they start to go pretty easy. And me and my buddy Andy were able to finish three chicken tractors worth of half lap joints in a couple hours. This is funny. I didn't even read this paragraph. John describes it almost exactly what I just said. You'll get into a rhythm while making these cuts. It seems a little daunting at first and then you'll become more comfortable and settle into it. You'll be done before you know it. If you work in a team, I recommend having one person measuring and doing the chisel work and the other person cutting with the saw. It helps a lot. I didn't even read that paragraph. <laughs> we did exactly that and that's exactly how I felt. So John pretty much nails it. And now we have them all cut and we are ready for the big moment, start assembling our chicken tractors. And I got my son here to help me today. Come on in here, Bubba. I got my helper with me today. Who's the Lego master in the family? Me. Oh, really? Mm. What are these kind of like? Legos. Big boy Legos. Mm. And we're gonna build ourselves a Lego chicken tractor. What do you mm. think? Sounds good. Here we go. Let's get assembled. This is called a drill, and this is called an impact driver. Okay? Do you know what the difference is? Yeah, impact driver and drill. Which one's the impact driver? Impact driver. No, this one's the impact driver, and this one's the drill. We're gonna put a drill bit in the drill. Okay. Alright, put those back. to move on to another kind of scary part of this project, something that's held me back. But before we do, it's time to do the Home City Camel Train shout out. And today's shout out goes to Georgia and Landon Bright. You may remember Holland's Heroes YouTube channel was featured on an Ask Home Study. That's Georgia and Landon. You can go check them out, click the link right there. 
Tell them hello from Homesteady. Mother and son team going at the Homestead thing. Give them some support. Georgia writes, my son was put on the spectrum and given a class two narcotic medication that I have always been uncomfortable with. I cannot wait to try camel milk for him. I ordered her book already so I can order some milk. That's the book Camel Crazy, all about camel milk. We, we did the interview on this channel. She says, now as far as getting a camel, we'll need to talk to you about maybe setting up payments for one. It will take us a few years to get ready. <laughs> George is already wanting to put a deposit on a Homesteady camel. <laughs> right now they have 15 chickens, a dog, a hamster, and they're doing some container gardening on their homestead in Northwest New Mexico. But they are looking around the country to find a place to build Landon's dream homestead. They would love to move this summer to that dream homestead. And Georgia says she's listening and learning to wonderful YouTubers like yourself as we make our plans. So thank you, Georgia. That was so nice of you to say. Thank you guys for sponsoring this episode of The Camel Train. I hope you find that dream homestead. Everybody go say hi to Hogan's Heroes. Give them some love. Subscribe to their channel. You can follow their homesteading adventures. Now let's get back into building our chicken tractor and the next complicated thing that had me worried and hold, held me back from building this thing sooner. Now we're diving into the section of the, the chicken tractor where we have to bend EMT conduit. I both love that John uses EMT conduit and hate it. <laughs> EMT conduit is strong and lightweight, so awesome for this purpose but it does take learning to bend conduit with a conduit bender. Another skill that I don't have that has kept me in the past from doing this chicken tractor design. I've always looked at it and thought, oh, I don't know how to bend conduit. I'm gonna mess that up. It's gonna waste money. I'm not gonna do it. Here's another perfect opportunity so for some growth to get a life skill that as a farmer, you'll use many times more doing other little things on your homestead. So while this has held me back in the past, and I've said, I don't want to build this chicken tractor, I got to learn to bend conduit. I'm going to learn to bend conduit. I'm going to do it. I got a conduit bender, I got the conduit, and it can't be that hard. And one of the things I love, John reminds you, in the book, he says, he says, uh, don't fret if you're off by an inch or two on your bends. It's a chicken tractor. You'll be fine. Good reminder. We're just building a chicken tractor here, but the cool thing is we are learning a skill that when we're done with this chicken tractor, who knows where we'll use it next. So I'm doing it. I finished up all of my 90 degree angle arches as you can see over there. I got 12 of them. Now I had to make a little jig to bend the 45 degree angle. So I just took two of the scraps from the project, two by four scraps, and I screwed them together on a piece of just marine grade plywood that I had lying around the shop, a little scrap, and I made sure that a piece of EMT would slide right in the middle there. Now I can go place it on the ground and hold up. Bingo, that's what we want. So that'll hold the 90 degree angle as I bend each corner and hopefully we'll be good to go. It's a new morning with these chicken tractors. I've actually finally got it, enough of it pieced together and on the ground and I've just been shocked by something. And yet another reason John Siskovich's chicken tractor is one of the best, if not the best design. I, it's definitely the best design I've seen and why it's definitely better than the Homesteady design. Let me show you this. This thing is huge. Look at how big this chicken tractor is. It's like 40 square feet. Our chicken tractor was maybe half that size, 
This thing is really big, which is gonna allow us to get a lot of animals out on grass. And like I said, I mean, if the sheep need a little hut to go into, I could use this for the sheep. I mean, this thing is enormous. You know, if you're looking for a good chicken tractor, so far this build has been really, really easy. The things that have kept me back, uh, they were not so technical that you can't learn them with John's book and another YouTube video to supplement it. And once you do it, you get in a rhythm and it clicks and you'll really enjoy it. So at the close of this video, I'm just gonna encourage you, if you're on the fence about chicken tractors and, and trying to build your own or trying to find a design online, <sighs> John's, click there to get it. Uh, it's going great, I'm really enjoying this. The next video in this series, this is a series by the way, there's the playlist. The next video in the series, which is what I'm gonna start today, is going to be assembling the chicken tractor. I've got all the pieces built, I've got all the cutting and all the bending done. It's time to put it all together. Not a moment too soon, because I've got so many animals that I gotta get out of the barn so I can get new ones in the barn.